God bless you all, everyone. Good evening, good evening. Pastor April is here for Power Monday Evening Empowerment. God bless you. I'm going to give you guys a minute to get right on in. I'm going to be right here organizing some stuff while you guys are coming on in. I see everybody coming in already. Hey, Sister Lashanda Haywood, God bless you. God bless you. Y'all come on in. Well, y'all just like popped up. I thought y'all were going to wait till like 6 o'clock. But yeah, you guys are here. And it's time for Power Monday Evening Empowerment. I got a lot of word to get in on this evening. So I'm going to need your help with prayer, your participation. Uh, so we can navigate this thing. All right. God bless you. I love you guys. See everyone coming on in. Hey, Kezani. Love you guys. Love the family. Hey, Tori. Hope you're enjoying yourself, Tori. God bless you. Minister Titania Clark. Love you. Love you. God bless you. Mommy Carmen. Love you. God bless you. Galia. I'm laughing from your joke from Sunday, literally. <laughs> All right. Galia, I love you. God bless you. All right. Then, glory to God. I see there's a more uh more is that Mo morikata tish i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right please let me know if it's your first time here god bless you and thank you for joining us i see mommy barbara kennedy is with us and i think i have lipstick on my nose let's take that off let's fix that right now good all right <laughs> yes all right i see uh Miss Frida, God bless you. Hey, Prophetess Dion, God bless you. Prophetess Dion Thomas, all the way from San Antonio. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see everyone coming on in. We're going to be doing some biblical work on understanding the dream realm. All right. So I believe that um, we're getting ready to be blessed. I know last week was a lot but I'm gonna try to take my time this evening and so we can just kind of go with a good flow, all right? Hey, Sister Valerie, God bless you. Minister Michael Pink, I love you, God bless you. All right, good to see y'all. Nikia, I just, I miss you guys. I've been thinking about you guys. I miss y'all so much. Hey, Mommy Jeanette, God bless, God bless you. I love you, Mommy Jeanette, God bless you. Hallelujah, glory to God. Father, we just bless you. We just honor you. We just thank you. I want to get y'all in right in as soon as you can because I want to go to work. We got some work to do. Minister Tamalia Scott, I love you. All right, I love you. God bless you. Hey, Sammy, Samantha Bell. Samantha, I am praying for you, okay? I hope you hear me. I'm praying for you. Stay encouraged. Stay encouraged. All right, I love you guys. Hey, Keisha. Keisha, I love you. I was thinking about you today. You're so awesome. I love you. Yes. Hey, Mommy Jackie. God bless you. I know you're either at the church doing some work, some renovation. We appreciate you, Mommy Jackie. God bless you. All right, y'all come on in. Hey, Rachel Richardson, a.k.a. Janet Jackson. God bless you. Come on right in. It's okay, Sammy. You're going to be all right. Okay, I'm going to call you on Wednesday, not tomorrow, because you're not going to study again tomorrow. But on Wednesday, I'm going to make some date. Just hold me to it. Make sure you send me a text message about 1 o'clock there. All right? I wanted to touch base with you. All right? But I love you guys. Y'all come on in. Yes, yes, yes. I appreciate it. I feel all the love. God bless you. This is going to be good. So you guys are going to want to really kind of get some something you can just write with and just jot down your thoughts with. You know, because I, I don't want for you to just... I do want for you to hear and understand. But I also want for you to be able to have something that you can go back to. I mean, of course, you can go back again and watch the video, but y'all come on in. I love you guys. Y'all come on in and grab your notebooks, grab your Bibles, your tablets, you know, all of that. Y'all come on in. We go and do this. By the grace of God, this is going to happen, and we're truly going to be blessed on this evening. Pastor Philip Johnson, I appreciate you. Let me tell you that. I appreciate you. I know I probably say it all the time, or I might just not even say it enough. But I appreciate you. Uh, bless God. God bless you, son. And of course, to the open fire pastors, I know they're going to be jumping on in a minute. So um, I love you guys. God bless you. I'm looking forward to midday motivation tomorrow with Pastor Jamie Blunt and uh, Pastor Greg, Pastor Damien, Pastor Johnson. And, uh, you know, as the week goes by, I love you guys. Y'all come on in. 
Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Hey, Brother Dale. God bless you, Brother Dale, all the way from San Antonio, Texas. Mother Barbara, we love you. You just got to hurry up and come. That's what you just got to do. You just got to hurry up and come to Texas. We be waiting on you. All right. We be waiting on you. All right. Y'all come on in. Hey, Minister Devon Johnson. God bless you. You guys come on and it's going to be good. The Lord is kind to us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we bless you, Jesus. Can you help me bless the Lord? Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Jamie. Glory to God. Jesus, we give you this time together with us. We yield it. We surrender it to you. Oh, Rema me kundi di 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 esi kiende de 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 bondi di di osi ondo lo 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 bo shi anaya. Father, we thank you. You are our strength. Eh, karaman di 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 osi anaya rabase. Oh, Rema me kundi di 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 esi ondo lo 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 ko si ende le 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 bondi da 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 ban di 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 esi anaya. Oh, Jesus. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Something has just already started to happen. I believe there's going to be answers. I felt like just as I started praying in the spirit, because you know how your spirit man, you start praying in the spirit, your spirit man start going, it goes to work. And it's like, it's not just a praise unto God and a connection with him, but God begins to download. And I just feel like some answers are getting ready to come from our live stream on today so god bless you i want to welcome you officially to power monday evening empowerment sister jasmine starks god bless you i'm so happy you're here i'm encouraged to see you here uh i'm really encouraged all right i am i'll just say that all right god bless you thank you for being with us y'all come on in i'm gonna give you guys about a minute more but i want for the intercessors on the line to really help me this evening let us begin to pull up all right i want us to begin to pull pull not just you're not just pulling on me because i'm not the author of truth but the spirit of god is the author of truth hallelujah he is here right now in our midst where two and three are gathered in his name come on you see how many of us we're gathered right now but as we come together in his name, I believe something divine and potent is about to hit our spirit. I believe we're getting ready to get divine instruction and guidance. Hallelujah. Glory to God from the very counsel of God, of course, which is the very word of God itself. All right. So this is where we're at. I want you guys to grab your notebooks, grab your Bibles and I need some intercessors praying and just trusting God to really be moving on this evening. It's going to truly, truly be a blessing we welcome you spirit of the living god you're here working in this place work on our hearts jesus work on our minds jesus Oh God, think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords tonight, Daddy. I pull on you. I pull on the truth of who you are. I pull on your wisdom, your counsel, your understanding. I pull on your word in the name of Jesus. Feed my mind, feed my spirit, fill my soul, fill my heart. And help me to execute this tonight in Jesus' name. Skillfully and soundly, with understanding, with clarity, with depth, with revelation. And with the power of the Holy Spirit. Father God, fill this place. I even ask that you allow an angel to be in this space with me. Hallelujah. On this evening, because of the magnitude of revelation. That I know and I feel and sense strongly in my spirit, God. That you're getting ready to pour into us, your people. And we just thank you, God. And we just honor you. You. thank you for being in our midst thank you for bringing clarity thank you for opening a realm that we can understand that we can come closer to you in in the name of jesus as your healing hearts as your healing minds eh? as you're giving visions as you're giving wisdom as you're revealing secrets of the heart we just thank you god that it is so and we seal this moment right now in the name of jesus we seal this moment right now in the name of jesus hallelujah glory to god I bless the Lord, y'all. I bless the Lord. Y'all, come on right in. I'm getting ready to start again. I just want to welcome you to Power Mondays Evening Empowerment right here, live on Facebook at Open Fire International Fellowship. You can catch the replay again right here and also on YouTube. Thanks to our awesome, amazing, totally cool, all right, okay, media team. They are the bomb, all right, thebomb.com, all right? They're awesome, okay? And so I appreciate you guys. And they'll have it available there for you. Uh, before I go any further, I believe we need to give honor where it is due. God has blessed this man of God. 
Pastor Coffee, our lead pastor, to really give the heart that he has, uh, 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 he's been given and the kind of way that he gives to the people and the opportunities. There's a culture in our ministry where opportunities are created for people. And Pastor Coffee, we want to bless you and we want to bless God for your life and truly honor you on this evening for the opportunity that you have given us through your obedience to share the word of God, to be cultivated, to be trained, and to be developed. I honor you, not just as my husband because you're like super fine and I totally love you, but I honor you because of who you are in the kingdom. You're my pastor and I love you and I appreciate you. Can we bless God for senior pastor, Dr. Lincoln George Coffee? All right, I love that man. I appreciate him, all right? God bless him. Now, are you ready for the word of God on this evening? Come on in if you're coming on in. I'm going to jump right ahead because I want to do well and maximize our time on this evening. I want to do well and I want to maximize the time we have been given. All right. So, bless God. Again, I want us to run to, did you guys remember our anchor verse for this again? Again, we are dealing with the understanding the dream realm, understanding the dream realm, understanding the dream realm. We started some work. I'm going to do a quick recap and then I'm going to run into some uh, what I think is, you know, some new information in this series. I believe I just want to finish on today. It's kind of a way I kind of like started as early as I did because secretly in the back of my head, I have a different mission for next week all right i really really want to some people have kind of been pressing on me to teach about um you know soul ties and uh and uh to continue along with the dream realm to deal with like incubus and succubus spirits so i'm wavering between do i teach on that uh so i can deal with soul tie the dream realm in the in the area of you know where spirits are involved how how you know can covenant be made with spirits we talk about spirits husband spirit wife what does a bible gotta say about that are those things even real you know i mean what does a bible gotta say about night dreams and sexual night dreams and what does it mean if i have one of those what am i supposed to do so i have kind of been pressed to do it but i am also being pressed to really teach about uh, um ridding yourself of toxic people i have been kind of pressed with that because i just feel like in this season uh we just really got to learn how to qualify our surrounding and i really want to deal with toxic people toxic soul ties i really want to deal with that just toxic it's just not healthy for your emotion it's not wealthy for your well-being you're losing who you are behind toxic people and toxic situations and i want to talk about how you allow yourself to be involved in things like that you know how did i get here why am i constantly attracting toxic people and toxic situations so i'm kind of torn between so let's just see you know um okay minister titan said i should keep doing dreams and then toxic people so i might in, in in the third week from now i might just continue with the dream realm um dealing with um incubus and succubus spirits because i know this is a common demon and i want to teach people really teach you biblically what does this mean you know what i'm saying what does the bible have to say about because the bible have to say something about everything all right so what does the scripture have to say about that so pray about it and okay all right okay the vote is let's keep doing dreams okay so obviously by the grace of god on um next week monday coming we're gonna continue i want to deal with the dream realm and our sexuality so obviously that's gonna be something very strong so y'all gotta be praying for me i want to talk about soul ties with some of that so we'll do that and then we'll move over into the whole toxic people just kind of qualifying our surroundings all right but for now we're gonna continue in dealing with the dream realm let us run to our anchor scripture job 33 15 to 17 Job, uh, Job 33, 15 to um, 18 rather. And the Bible says in a dream in the vision of the night, 
Deep sleep falleth upon men in slumbering upon the bed. Then he opened their, the ears of man and sealed their instruction. Verse 17 says that he may withdraw man from his purpose. God can stop you from what you plan to do in the dream realm. He draw you from your purpose. He hides you from the pride of what's in your heart. And, um, and then the Bible says he keep back his soul from the pit. He can protect you from destruction. He can warn you, this is where you're going. But I don't, in the dream realm, it's also a revelation realm. And God reveals to redeem. He's not revealing because he wants to destroy. Obviously, he's revealing to redeem. So in that dream realm right there, he is showing you your next move. All right? So I believe somebody's about to get some answers today. Verse 18 again. Uh -uh. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He, in the dream realm, God can show you an attack that's coming. He can show you and give you warnings and instructions. And he can also show you the condition of your heart. That's really the summation of this right here. Now, remember, on last week... I begin to show us again. I'm going to run through this because I want to run over into the biblical principle of dream interpretation. That way you'll never have to call anybody again to interpret any dream for you. All right. You're going to know now that there's a biblical way to do this. All right. It doesn't mean you can't have counsel in your life and you probably, you know, God might send a Joseph to you, but I want to show you that God is speaking to you. So he wants you to come to him. All right. So I want to be able to really pull that from the scripture to show us the biblical way of dream interpretation. So let's recap quickly. Where were we at? We begin to understand what dreams are. Uh, I told you that a dream can be defined as a sequence of images that are passing through a person's mind when they're sleeping. Sequence of images that is passing through a person's mind when they are sleeping. So dream is usually happening when you are Obviously, you're asleep. It can be daytime, nighttime, you're asleep. And the dream realm is something that takes place in the soul. The dream realm always affects the soulish realm. That's why in your dream, you can taste, you can smell, you can feel, you can touch. Why? Because the dream realm affects your soul versus in the vision realm, it can affect both your soul and your spirit. In the vision realm, you don't need to be sleeping for you to be caught up into a, a sphere or a realm or a dimension where God is revealing and pouring understanding and showing things that is to come. So that's the dream realm. Um, in the vision, it usually has to do with, it can happen in mental images uh, where something can be imprinted on your mind. God can just stamp it right there. You just see it. You It just hits you. You know that thing come up on you and you know God just spoke the vision realm. And so in the dream realm, well, there's a sequence of things passing before you while you're sleeping. That's particularly the area that I want to deal with. I told you guys that one of the ways of the manifestation of the pouring out of the spirit of God is not limited to people praying in tongues. That has to do with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One of the things that God said in his word is I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Let's bring some balance to scripture since we're going to teach scripture anyhow, right? He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy all right now the old men are gonna have dreams and the young men are gonna have visions and we just thought that that was limited only to christians and people who would get saved and people who would believe in the messiah but he said because he's pouring out his spirit one of the way that god speaks to us and pour out himself upon us is in the dream realm i don't know if you know that um almost the, the entire um amount of dreams and visions that's in the bible can literally take up the entire new testament so just um bible just just some fundamental facts about scripture is that the amount of dreams and vision almost equal to the entire writing of the new testament so you uh, of the new testament so you can tell me god don't speak in dreams and visions he does all right 
And so we begin to understand that while the dreams and visions are happening, they can take on three major form. What do I mean by this three major form? Obviously, there's a level where God speaks to you. We see this in the book of Job that we just read, right? God speaks in dreams and vision. Remember, we saw this again in Numbers 12 and 6, where God said, if there's a prophet among them, I'm going to speak to them in dreams. I'm going to speak to them in visions. I'm going to reveal myself to them. In Hosea 12 and 10, God said, I've also spoken to the prophets and gave them numerous multiple visions. All right. And um, so we know that God is speaking. God is speaking. He said um, he was also going to speak in this form in Acts 2.17. It's the same thing that's linking with Joel chapter 2 when it talks about the pouring out of God's spirit. So the one of the ways that God speak, obviously through scripture, and we're going to see that a lot on today, is through dreams and vision. So we know that was level one. I expounded a lot on that already. And last week, I'm not going to go over it because I want to run into what I feel like you're going to have your taste away from this teaching and this is going to be with you for a lifetime all right and then number two we understand that dreams also happen in the soulish realm the soulish realm all right the soulish realm we remember where in jude it says it spoke it spoke about filthy dreamers that's probably something i'm going to pick up with on next week when i talk about your um, perverted dreams and um and and uh, and filthy dreamers and not just that in ecclesiastics 5 and 3 we see how the word of god says that because you're so busy throughout the day because of vanity the busyness of the day it can cause a weight and an imprint in your um in your soulish mind, in your soulish realm, and, and in your um, subconscious state. So you're sleeping and you're having a dream, not necessarily because God is speaking or the devil is speaking, but your soul is so full because, again, you have either, it's working subconsciously, you haven't spent time to either detox, your mind is working a lot. So you have you ever been sleeping? You're sleeping, you didn't have a bad dream. Uh, you, you, you didn't have a nightmare, but you went to sleep and you wake up exhausted. It didn't matter how much hours you've had because you probably don't realize it because the mind don't turn off. You know what I'm saying? It's hearing, it's in tune, it's alive, it's going to be there, it's not dead. And again, like I was saying is, one of the ways that this happened in the soulish realm is you're sleeping, you're watching the TV, the television or the television. So you're watching that and Jackie Chan, and, 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 and all kind of crazy stuff is happening and we don't want to talk about Bruno and then you get up and you have a dream that the family is keeping a secret and you just get up and you you looking around at everybody somebody keeping a secret around here when you were just watching we don't want to talk about Bruno and I mean so that thing because you never turn the TV off and not because you're sleeping don't mean you're not hearing all right that's why the Bible says it's when you're sleeping that God opens up your ears all right y'all stop laughing y'all know I got kids so my kids be making me watching crazy stuff all right and so um so yes so when you're sleeping god gotta open up your ears because sometimes the subconscious the mind is so filled and it's running around so you can't sleep you're not dreaming but you're not resting either because the weight that's in the mind that's the reason why i encourage believers every night before bed you might not want to be you're not one of those persons that have i have longer prayers in the morning by the time the night come i'm i'm exhausted i want to watch something to make me laugh and go to sleep all right but by the time the night comes one of the things i would encourage you to do is put on a worship song for five minutes it could even be three minutes start with three minutes all right anything less than that you're just lazy and you need to do better all right so so get a song for five minutes and you put that worship song on and just begin to worship just begin to pray in the spirit because what you want to do is you kind of want to declutter and uh stabilize your mind you know, as you're going into that place, especially if you're somebody like me, that you know God speak to you in a prophetic way. You're a seer. Seer are people who sees in their dreams. Samuel was a seer. So he saw Saul coming before Saul got to him. Uh, he saw this thing already. All right. So he, he, he saw he would see that's who he is. And so he was a seer that was specific to his prophetic gift. Okay, and so the soulish realm. So we got to watch that in the soulish realm, you're too busy or you may have a lustful thought and then in the night, that lustful thought begins to manifest itself and it can also be in a demonic realm too. And I'll talk about that when I deal next week with um, the um, spirit realm with 
It's incubus and succubus demons, all right? And then now we have the third realm where it's the devil that is influencing dreams and visions. I showed you guys in Luke chapter 4, all right? Here is Jesus going up. Jesus is going up. He's being tempted of the devil, but physically his location was in the wilderness. But while he was in the wilderness, he was caught up in a vision. This is a vision realm. Read your Bible. I brought that out on next week. I don't want to labor on that because I want to run to some things I believe is going to help you. I want to give you the toolbox for dreams and vision. The toolbox for understanding the dream realm. That is the toolbox for understanding the dream realm. And so in Luke chapter four, here it is. And you can see that again, I think it's Matthew chapter four as well. We're in the temptation of Jesus. So here it is, Jesus is being in the wilderness. That's where God led him. God did not lead him up on the mountain. God did not lead him up on the, the temple top. God led him in the wilderness. And so here he is in the wilderness. He's fasting and he's being tempted by the devil. God led him there. God wasn't going to control how the temptation was going to be done. It needed to happen. So here it is. The devil comes. Y'all got to hear me now because I feel my Holy Ghost. Come on. I want you guys to share this. Don't just take it alone for yourself. Share this. Glory to God. Glory to God. So here it is. So the spirit now, he's going to come, huh? And when he comes, this demonic power, he's coming to infiltrate. He's coming to sow a seed. Now, I want to pause right here because what I got to say is very, 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 very important. You see, we undermine the dream realm for those of us who are lazy prophets and we're not good stewards over the gift of God. So we... We undermine the dream realm. So God speak to you in a dream and because you forget it, you think it no longer carry power. You think it no longer carry weight. But I want to propose to you, it was in the dream realm that God made covenant with Abraham. It was in the dream realm that God made covenant with Samuel. It was in the dream realm that God revealed the secrets to Daniel. It was in the dream realm that God spoke to Pharaoh about a seven year and another seven year that was for 14 years in advance. Oh, I, I, I'm going to touch that too to also make mention that the reason why Pharaoh got the dream wasn't because Pharaoh was a prophet. God speak to you in dreams based on your position. So if you're an intercessor in the church, God is going to speak to you based on your assignment. If you're the pastor, there's things that God is going to show you that God ain't going to show everybody else. Because in the dream realm, God honors the principles he himself has put in place. And so God is not going to talk to you the way God don't talk to me the way God talked to Pastor Coffee. Because I'm not the lead pastor. So there's things that you're going to see as a husband, as a wife, as a mother, because of your position. You might be an intercessor for a school district or your, 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 your office and your workplace. God is going to speak to you, Pharaoh, based on your position. So God never spoke. Why didn't God give the stuff to Joseph. While Joseph was anointed and had a relationship with God, Joseph was not the rank and he was not the leader. He was not the leader in that area. So God wasn't going to give it to Joseph. Plain and simple. But even though Joseph had the gifting of interpretation, God spoke to Pharaoh because Pharaoh is in charge of Egypt at the time. And so one of the things is God is going to speak to you in dreams and vision based on your position. God will show me in dreams about people who would come into my husband's life, people coming in the church, who I'm supposed to position myself for prayer, who I'm supposed to help cultivate, who I'm so, who are sojourners and who are sons. Everybody that comes into church isn't a spiritual son or a spiritual daughter. Some of them are coming to be spiritually fostered until they would find their real parent. And so I can see in a dream when God said, this one is a son, this one is a daughter. And usually those are the ones you're going to have to fight and work a little harder for, like you trying to have to prove who you are to them, only because God showed you now the sojourners they come they get what they're getting and they're gone but god is gonna speak to you based on your position i hope y'all are understanding please let me know you guys are getting it so then there is the demonic realm where the devil took jesus up now if god can make covenant i don't think you understand me god gave wisdom to solomon in a dream 
wisdom when he was sleeping. The Bible said he woke up and he didn't, he just realized it was a dream. He didn't even, it didn't even fully turn on him until his wisdom was tested that in the dream realm, he already got an understanding heart. So all of what was built around him, his entire kingdom was now built around the fact that in the dream realm, God spoke to him, put something in his spirit. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Let me tell you why this is important. Y'all listen to me. You remember I said this is important. I said all of that to say this. For example, if you are married, all right, and you have a dream that you're being tempted to commit adultery, if you go and you allow your spirit, your soul, yourself in the dream realm to commit the adultery and to yield to the temptation, you don't realize that by the time you come out of that dream, the devil don't have to do nothing more. It's already set because in the dream realm, he's already met you there and you already fall for the adultery. So when the test come to commit the adultery, you are weak. You're not able to endure and you are going to get yourself in trouble. Why? Because you didn't conquer him in the dream realm. If the devil could have dealt with Jesus and Jesus would have yielded to the temptation in the dream realm when satan brought him up on the mountain show him everything then that wasn't sufficient because jesus wasn't gonna bow and change who he is in the dream realm the devil shifted the scene and he brought him on top of the temple tell him to throw himself down what am i saying if jesus had yielded in the dream realm to the temptation when he came out of that realm he wouldn't be able to deal with the devil no more if you're struggling with drugs and alcohol and in your dream you dream that you're being tempted to drink it if you don't resist it there it's a matter of time before that thing show up and you are not going to have the power to deal with that thing the way that you're supposed to can, am I making sense? I don't know if I'm making sense. I don't just want to be going off because I'm trying to land somewhere. I want to know that you guys are understanding. I have seen in the dream realm where I would see an argument coming with me and my husband. And I can hear myself saying, don't argue. Don't bite it. Don't do it. And in the dream realm, when I shut that thing down and three, four days later, the scenario shows up. But I know I have peace in my spirit because in the dream realm, I conquered it. Come on now, in the dream realm. So for some of us who struggle with lust, one of the things I'm going to share my personal testimony of being delivered from sexual demons in my dream was um, God showed me this demon came to you in the dream realm. It was the spirit of the night, April. And because you opened yourself to lust and masturbation and pornography and you were just sexually curious, this demon gained ground in this area. And now the way this spirit manifests itself in your life is in your dream realm. I'm going to share some stuff next week. I don't even know if the church is ready to talk about this because like, we don't want to talk about Bruno. We don't want to talk about the things that's truly going to set the captive free. And so I remember God began to coach me. So when, when in, in the dream realm, this is dream realm. So how I conquered that demon wasn't just, I did fast for 10 days. I did fast it for 10 days, right? And then I did, I, I sat on the word, I sat on the um, confessions and all of that. But God told me, he said, today, I remember clear as day, he said, today when you sleep, that thing usually comes to you at a certain time. But I want you to meditate on this scripture because when this thing comes, you're going to conquer it in the dream realm. It was in the dream realm when I felt my subconscious mind drifting and that demon showed up in the form of some strange person. And my, I felt the word jump out of my chest and grab that thing and it was a scripture fighting that spirit fighting that entity and that's how i got my deliverance in the dream realm but there were things i had to do prior i prepped my spirit through prayer and fasting because i had no idea that realm was so powerful so what i'm saying is if you're not dealing god can deliver you from an infirmity in the dream realm and if you don't realize that god just showed you you're healing the dream realm you're gonna wake up and think you're still sick not understanding Y'all don't want me to talk. Come on now. April, you got to hurry up. You got to hurry up. Show them in scripture. Don't just, don't just uh, show them in scripture. Bring them to scripture. Let's just go there. All right. So, so let's do this. 
So I just said all of that. So we know it. God speak. Your soul speak because you're just busy. All right. And then the devil can bring you up in a dream realm. Offer you things to eat. Offer you. Satan can bring you in a dream realm. We saw this in Jude. And let you question your pastor's integrity. Satan can bring you in a dream realm and let you question God's integrity. You remember in Judah, the Bible said they're filthy dreamers and they scoff at authorities. All of this is speaking about in the dream realm. All of a sudden, you had a dream. You saw first lady and she was surrounded by four dogs. Why every time you see dogs in a vision? Because you, you are the queen and the king of dreams interpretation. And I know first lady is a Jezebel. Because I saw the dogs around her. And the Bible said beware of dogs. And, and, and so in your mind you're thinking. You remember when Jezebel died. It's the dog that was licking her blood. And I think those dogs are, are a wrong first lady. Because you know she's a Jezebel. And God is going to expose her. And um, when God exposed that Jezebel first lady coffee. What's going to happen is those dogs are there to lick her blood. Who tell you that? Do you know dogs can also mean protection? How about those four dogs around me represent my Peters who will be wretched and get you if you come at me? How about that? How about those dogs around me represent some Peters in my life that are guarding me and they ain't scared to bite at you if you come to invade my life? Because they see that you are not fit to be around us because your influence ain't right. Your motive ain't right. How about that? How about that interpretation? Well, I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So we want to, first lady, calm down. Girl, you so high, but calm down. All right. So I want to I wanna bring some balance to that. So yes, in the dream realm, Satan can let you question people's integrity in the dream realm. It happened to me. That's how I know. And when I'm coming out the dream, I can hear my spirit saying, I don't believe that God, my, my emotions tell me, even though I had a dream, I don't believe something in me says, no, that dream was the devil trying to sow a seed about God's leadership because those people are vital in my life. And that's why I preserve my relationships in the way that I do. So, because you gotta, you, you, the devil will do stuff. All right. So enough of the devil. Now let's keep going. <laughs> so then we talk, I want to come over now to dream interpretation. Girl, take a deep breath. Cause you almost out of breath sister. <laughs> so covenants can be made in dreams. Covenants. I knew this young lady, her grandfather was a witch. He died and in a dream she had a vision that he came back to coach her to be the next um, witch in the family. He was a warlock and um, so she had a dream that he came back to coach her to be the next wizard. You would have heard of people who've had dreams even about great men and great women of God. It's possible. Look what happened to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. You saw Moses and you saw um, Elijah coming in in that place. Uh, and um, why? In that vision realm. So, so I'm like, God can use people to speak. The living belong to God. And the dead, we should not consult. All right? That's a whole nother realm. Some of you taking instruction from your dead granny, your dead uncle, first lady, why are you going there? Your dead granny your dead uncle your dead cousin your this dead 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 you taking instruction from dead people in your dream dead people telling you turn your house around dead people telling you who to marry and because the devil know you trust grandma so much grandma so close to you that grandma is a counselor in your life and so when grandma passed with your ancestral spirit when grandma passed grandma didn't pass away really you kept that thing where your counsel still came from her so the devil just capitalize on that he knows that grandma is the authority in your life and it's not the word of god and it's not the holy spirit so he let your grandma come in a dream as safe as she was because she in heaven with jesus all right bless her soul as safe as she was the devil will capitalize on that to give you counsel from dead men i mean what's the use of the holy ghost isn't the dream run don't lead us it's there for a reason but it's not to lead us it's those who are led 
by the Spirit of God or the sons of God. The New Testament church is not led by dreams and visions. We are led by the Holy Ghost. So for you that have excessive dreams and visions and you allow your life to be led by that, you should be good steward of the counsel and the way that God speaks to you, but we're not led by that. That's why the word of God has to be the ultimate counsel when it comes on to how we're dealing with dreams and vision. I feel like I'm being pulled in all kind of direction. Stop pulling me. Leave me alone. Let me finish my work. All right. Appreciate it. Amen. Okay. Here we go again. Um, you remember in Daniel 2, what else can happen in the dream room? I want to talk about what else can happen in the dream room. And then quickly, I want to give you a few ways for biblical interpretation. So here we go. We're being led by the spirit. Thank you. That's it. You're not led by dreams and visions. For those of you who are dreams and vision junkie and you're overly excessively prophetic and I'm very prophetic, but I don't want to be pathetic. You know what I'm saying? So I know God speak in that realm. There's people in my life. I trust their counsel. I would pray about a dream. And then while I pray about a dream, there's people that I trust. I know they hear from God and I would call them one of my, uh, my, my, my best, um, friend, uh, pastor Tasha Johnson. I mean, you know, I, I'll call her. I say, Tash, I got a dream. Something is going on. I don't know. You, you got to just help me pray about this. I'm seeking God in that way. I tell my husband, there's people in my ministry that I'm very close to. As it relates to this, I trust their counsel. I know God speak to them in that realm as well. And, um, and I can have in the counsel of many, but ultimately I'm led by the word of God and by the spirit of God. That's what that is. And that has to be the law. If the dream realm take more authority than the word of God in your life, Life, you might be a practicing witch and don't even know it because the dream realm should not carry more weight than scripture. All right? That's all I got to say about that. Ouch. Okay, let's keep going. Secrets can be revealed in dreams. God reveal revelations and secrets. When I say secrets, it's not secret as uh, whose husband is cheating on them, whose um, wife is cheating on them, who's lying, who's stealing. No, you see how we are? We're so quick to be so judgmental and doomsday in, in, in this realm that we don't understand that what this is saying here is God is revealing to you things that could not otherwise be known in the dream realm. It's a secret of God's heart. The Bible says God disclosed the secret, the thing to Daniel in that night when the king had the dream God disclosed it the king himself didn't even remember his dream but God disclosed the vision because it was so important to Daniel so but it also brings the revelation that secrets can be shared in the dream realm again God don't have no business to tell you that Jay-Z is cheating on Beyonce because usually uh, here we go for those of you who are like celebrity prophets Okay, usually the dream realm has to do with your life anyhow. And the things that has to involve you anyhow. So why is it necessary for God to tell you Beyonce cheating on Jay-Z just because you were just watching foolishness on YouTube and on BAT and MTV and I don't even know what we have now because you know I'm old school so I know they got new stuff now at NBC, ABC. I don't know what they got, all right? And so why, why is that necessary for God to tell you that? All right. And so God can reveal secrets, but I want to show this here. Can God speak to you about people? Of course. I remember, I'll never forget this. I remember, um, a little while back, about five years ago, I'm having this vision, this dream. I'm sleeping in the night, having this dream. I woke up terrified. I mean, terrified, scared, because I was like, what kind of a foolishness this is? You know what I'm saying? So in the dream now, I saw that my husband and I were there, but now we start having this rift between us because my friend that I knew for years, but I knew this girl longer than five years, but in the vision, I felt like I've only known her five years and she was very close to me. And in the dream, it's like she was having an affair with my husband. So you can imagine how I get up and I mean, I'm like, I know that was a dream. I was like, is God telling me to pray against adultery in my marriage or whatever it is? I was telling my husband, I said, baby, I had this dream. And you know what pastor is, stands by his integrity, has been faithful to me. I've never in 10, 11 years of marriage next year, by the grace of God, ever had to question his integrity and his loyalty to me. So Pastor Coffey said, well, you need to go back to God again to ask him about that dream because it cannot be us because we don't live our lives like that. So of course, 
I went back again because I felt the dream had an urgency in it. And one of the things is, remember how God can speak about the dream twice. I believe it was in um uh with Pharaoh when he said the dream come, the dream came twice to him. All right, our uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. My notes, I'm, I'm ahead of myself a little bit. King Nebuchadnezzar, the dream came twice. So when a dream comes twice, it means that God is insisting that you get this. There's something he wants to communicate. So I went again, I had the dream. I said, God, obviously I realize based on the circumstantial situation. So I start doing the, the mapping now. This don't look like my life. I'm not close to anybody like that, that I feel I could identify these persons in the dream. But the church wasn't even our church. We were pastors in the dream. Just like how we are pastoring there. The church wasn't even our church. But I felt like we were pastors, but this isn't our church. So I come now in the second dream, clear as day. I saw this pastor in right where I'm living, in Colleen. He was having an affair with this woman that they knew for five years that was working with his wife, clear as day. When I went back, the dream played again, but this time the real people that the dream involved were in it. What I'm seeing is when God give you a dream and he's speaking to you about something, he might need for you to intercede or it's going to involve you. I didn't have no business to with those individuals. I actually, they just knew us in passing. I don't have a relationship with them. So how did it involve me? Right there, the night, the morning now when I had the dream and I saw who the wife was and I saw that this woman was in their church. The man had an affair with her for five years. She's been connected to them. This is happening. That same day, I got a call from the church. They said, this pastor's wife is looking for you because she went somewhere and somebody tell her, I don't know, but I feel like God is telling me to tell you to go to First Lady Coffee. Why? Because God was giving me instructions in the dream about the situation. Did it involve me personally as my life? No. That's why I'm saying if you don't have clarity, you go back to God again. Don't proceed without proper instruction when God speaks to you about something. I felt like that was so clear. All right? So, secrets can be revealed. Revelation, God is going to disclose things to you. Now, um, now, obviously, again, I say people who are quite prophetic that in the dream realm, certain things are amplified. It's just amplified. You have multiple dreams. Even if you're not prophetic, some people, you just, that's just the way God speaks to you. If you're one of those persons like myself. Now, uh, 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 yes, here we go. This part right here is also important. This is very, very important. Two things right here. Number one. The need for interpretation. So let's switch gear a little bit and come out now into, we know what dreams are. Everybody have one. Don't send me none. Don't inbox me none. I'm not going to interpret it for you, but I'm going to tell you how to get your dream interpreted. All right. Okay, good. All right, good. Not to offend you or anything. I'm just saying like, if you get the word, apply the word, you're going to see it's going to work in your life. Okay. All right. All right. If you feel that bad about it, okay, inbox me. We, we'll see what God has to say to you. All right. Okay, good. But but whatever I'm telling you now, if you inbox me, this is what I'm going to tell you later on. All right. Here we go. All right. It's right here. Number one, the need for interpretation. Sometimes there's going to be direct dreams and there's no need for interpretation. There's going to be direct dreams. There's no need for interpretation. Where do you see this? Joseph. Joseph dreamt about the sheep being attacked. It didn't need no interpretation. Joseph dreamt and when he dreamt, his family got angry at him because the dream was clear. It didn't need no interpretation. Joseph dreamt and they start getting mad. First, the brothers got mad because he dreamt about the things and how one stood taller than the other and the other surrounded it. And the brothers got mad to say, oh, what? You think you're going to be bigger than us? Or you're going to be somebody now, Mr. Joseph, you person? Or because you got the coat of many colors, you just think you're so awesome? And, um, you know, the Bible said they wanted to destroy him and to kill him to see what would become of his dreams all right and so those dreams are very clear then he dream about the sun and the moon bowing down to him that special star and then his father and his mother got upset 
So what, Joseph? You gonna be lord over me and your mother too? It's one thing with your brother, but I mean, the dream didn't need no interpretation. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, the dream did not need any interpretation. We see this with Jesus and Joseph. You remember when Mary got pregnant? All right, uh huh. What God had to do was God had to speak to Joseph in a dream. God spoke to Joseph in a dream. Don't throw away Mary. The child she's carrying is God. He going to save you. All right. You don't want to get rid of her. Marry her. I mean, it was clear instruction. So somebody said, can God tell you who to marry? Yes. Not just Hosea. Don't just go marry a prostitute. Marry Mary too. All right. Okay. <laughs> and so, so God can tell you what to do and give you instructions that's necessary for your life based on what he has planned out for you. So with Joseph, it was quite clear. Marry Mary. And then you remember when Herod wanted to kill Jesus, Joseph had the dream. Why? Joseph had the authority to be um, uh, Jesus' um, authority in the earth at that time. So Joseph was responsible for him. Why didn't God keep giving the dreams to Mary? Maybe Mary had dreams. But obviously, the one who had the power to navigate the family unit at the moment was Joseph. And so when Jesus became of age, where he had that relationship consciously with his father growing, because the Bible said he grew in the spirit. So Jesus had to grow up in understanding in his humanity. Duh. You know what I'm saying? And so once that happened, then the scene shift. You don't see Joseph again. No, he does what his father say and he speak what his father says. All right. But up until then, you would see God speaking to Joseph in a vision. Hey, move Jesus out of town. Take him down to Egypt because Pharaoh going to try to kill these kids and Jesus can't be one of them. So we saw again when Pharaoh wanted to kill Jesus because the king is born. Based on the, the signs in the sky and then the astrologers, the Bible said that God spoke to these magicians, <laughs> these, these, these astrologers, God spoke to them in a vision and tell them, go another direction. Don't disclose with Herod what you have learned about the child. And he told them in the dream, Herod wants to kill the baby, protect the baby, go another way. So those dreams don't need no interpretation. Paul was on his ministry journey. He wasn't sure next where to go. And brah, he said, a man in a vision from Macedonia bid him to come. Clear interpretation. Paul, you're wondering where you're going to go preach next? Where God is sending you? Macedonia, a man from Macedonia bid him to come clear as day. It didn't need no interpretation. So some dreams just don't need interpretation. I'm talking now about the interpreting of the dream. So I believe I've laid some foundation in terms of definition. Now let me give you this because here's your toolbox. Some dreams don't need the, um, interpretation. All right. Then there were dreams that needed interpretation. Pharaoh's dream needed interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar's dream was so symbolic, it needed interpretation. But again, God spoke to Nebuchadnezzar in particular because of his position. So that's why I get nervous when I see people and I see the result of it. Because I've been around people who I'm telling you, I knew they went into realms that they should have never crossed. And I hear people saying God has called them to be the intercessors of great men and women that they don't even got no relationship with. And when you get hit in the spirit, you can't even, you barely can cover yourself. Come on now. So God ain't going to give you a realm to operate in without reason. Duh. Come on. There's no substance. There's no reason. I mean, there's no, it's not, it, it doesn't involve you. You get what I'm saying? So God spoke to Pharaoh in Joseph's time based on what involved him. The economy involved him. Come on. And that was the way God used Joseph to rise to power, to bring his people over into Egypt, to fulfill prophecy, blah, 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 blah. And the story continues. You saw it was right. It played out. It was God. He gets the glory. Hallelujah. Then you see Nebuchadnezzar. What was important about Nebuchadnezzar's dream that troubled him so much? Because he saw a statue of himself. Even though it was going to involve different world power at the time and it was a prophetic dream from God, he saw the statue of himself. Now, um, because God is going to speak to you in the realm of how you function. For example, God ain't going to talk to you about Mars. What? 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 I mean, I'm just trying to figure.
figure out why you're involved in this life in this earth. Why God want to talk to you about Saturn and Pluto? I, I, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't, in my brain, like it don't add up. But maybe you're different. You know what I'm saying? You different. You, you a different kind. And so God will talk to you about Pluto and um, Saturn and Mars and Jupiter. And uh, that's just your flow. All right. So God is going to talk to you based on the reality of of your life and circumstantial situation. So Nebuchadnezzar at the time when kings were in power, they would make statues of themselves. So you remember how they put up the statue, the men had to bow down to it. And so God had to speak back to him in his language. All right. Because one of his position and what God needed to say about the world powers that were going to come. The cup bearer, his dream needed interpretation. Joseph, um, the baker, his dream needed interpretation. Joseph tell him, you're going to die in three days. Joseph tell the other one, this thing represents three days. Why? Because he needed to interpret it. All right. And then you saw Peter in Acts chapter two. Here it is. God bringing down unclean animals that the law forbids you shouldn't eat. So I could imagine there's pork, there is pork, and there is more pork, and God dropped the big pig down. I'm just thinking in my head, right? I probably want some jerk pork right now. And God is telling Peter, eat it. And Peter is like, God, you know, I don't eat unclean meat. I'm a man of the law. I don't partake in this. But he did not know the interpretation. He did not know that in his mind as a Jew, they consider the Gentiles to be unclean people. He didn't realize the interpretation of it was, you think they're unclean. And don't call, you know, how do we know this? Because God is speaking to him based on how he sees in his own heart and how he understands. So God said, don't call what I call clean, unclean. So you call it unclean, but I'm telling you it's clean. And I need you to go to them and do my work with them. So those are visions. They're going to need, obviously, interpretation. So let me give you this and then we should be done. And again, I'll pick up on next week because... You know, I feel like it's kind of a natural flow of where we're going. I want to deal heavily with um, deliverance from spirit husband, spirit wife, because it happens in the dream realm. There's going to be a natural flow. And then we'll move on to the teaching I want to deal with about qualifying your surrounding. All right. So number one, I want to give you these few things. And here we go. Number one, I don't believe I'm going to be repeating them. So I'm going to be as thorough. And as clear as I can be. So here we go. Um, biblical tools for biblical interpretation. Number one, you got to understand that interpretation comes from God. Genesis 4, sorry, Genesis 40 and verse 8. When they came and they asked Joseph to um, interpret the dream, he said, doesn't interpretation comes from God? I'm going to go a little fast here, but I'm going to go clear. I'm going to repeat myself as many times as I need to so that I'll make sure you're getting it. So here is Joseph saying interpretation comes from the Lord. I want to establish that whenever time you get a dream, stop taking your dream, telling it to 50 people trying to get an interpretation as of this day, what day it is Monday, March 7, 2022. Those of you who are listening to me and will hear me after this. All right. Hey, Faye, love you. God bless you. Praying for you and the babies. All right. So after today, everybody watching in here, no more you taking your dreams, running to 50,000 people, trying to get an interpretation. Okay. Let's, let, let's just make sense of my nonsense. All right. If God wanted for them to interpret your dreams, why didn't he just give it to them to come to you? Huh? So you got to see that dreams are also a way that God wants to build a relationship with you. So we must understand number one law in interpretation in the dream interpretation toolbox is interpretation comes from the Lord and it has to be in alignment with his truth. Please to add that to the sentence. Interpretation must come from God and it must be in alignment with his truth. Genesis 40 and verse 8. 
Please to stop consulting people without proof of truth. Don't go to people who don't carry truth in their spirit. Because they're going to measure what you saw based on their logics rather than what God told you. All right? So look for, if you're going to have to share this with somebody, look for people who have evidence of God's truth in their life. Let me keep running. No dream should ever be interpreted above scripture. God will never counsel you in a dream to go outside of his will. I don't care how powerful the dream is. Thank you, Jasma. If the dream does not align itself with scriptures, come on now, you got to deal with that dream according to what the Bible says. But because we don't have truth and we like to function in the psyche, which is the psychic realm, we like to function in that soulish realm we don't want to be accountable and we don't want to be responsible for this truth of god so you prefer to hear something that goes sound like what you want to hear versus what god said number one rule number one is interpretation comes from the lord what did i it comes from god and it must be in alignment with his word god cannot tell you okay this is my church I'm sending you here. These are your pastors. This is your church family. In a dream, you see that. And two weeks later, you have another dream. And then God tell you another pastor is your, another pastor is your pastor. You must go to another church. You end up at that church two weeks later. Two months later, God talked to you again. And, and your thing is, I'm just going wherever God send me, man. I'm just going wherever God send me, man. I'm just being obedient to God, man. Let me ask you something. I don't know which Bible you've been reading, all right, with your vagabond wandering spirit, but the Bible I read tells me that those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in his courts. I want to know why out of all the people in the body of Christ, God just isolates you for um, ministry of, of everywhere, all right? Because every cell is unique either to the to the organ that it's connected to and the area in the body where it's placed and if the cell keep being misplaced it's going to become a cancerous cell so i want to know why god who obviously ain't got nothing to do all right just been busy telling you to move from church to church and forget that he said you must be planted so you can flourish so what i'm saying is when you're having dreams you better make sure your interpretation is in alignment with the counsel of god Hallelujah, because God might be showing you the dream about you hopscotching spiritually to tell you got a wandering spirit, but you're not going to interpret it like that because your, your first inclination is not to offend your own self. All right, let's keep moving. Number two, I don't want to stay there to offend anybody because I want you guys to like me and come back next week. All right. <laughs> okay, number two. So number one, interpretation come from God. Please, if you have a dream, if you haven't gone to God, don't come to me. We, 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 we not like that. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's for different individuals. I have different relationship with There are times. I just share a dream with my husband, not necessarily because I need interpretation. I know I'm going to go to God, but, or I'll call my friend and I'll be like, Hey, look, Tash, I got this dream. This is what's happening. But I mean, there's people in my circle that have that space. But I mean, you get a dream, though I, I'm not your I'm not your interpreter, I'm not a soothsayer, I'm not a medium. Alright, and stop treating your pastors and your leaders like they're that. Go to God. Somebody tell somebody what I just say. I don't mean to offend you. It doesn't mean we're not here for you if I tell you to go to God to get your dream interpreted. What I'm saying is go and pray. Go ask God what he's trying to tell you. Just go to God. Don't be mad at me. Go to God. Go to God. Stop using your pastors as your personal psychics and the prophets as your personal psychics. Go to God. All right? That's clear. I'm going to leave that alone because I don't want to offend. I don't want to offend nobody. All right? Number two, getting dreams. Sorry. Forgetting your dream does not change the importance, the warnings, and the instructions. 
Not because you forget your dream. It does not mean that it don't carry no weight. Um, Nebuchadnezzar couldn't remember the dream. He said, the thing is gone from me. So when he went and they asked him, the soothsayers asked him, tell us the dream. We'll tell you the interpretation. He said, the thing is gone from me. But we knew it was a dream from God. God gave it to him. But when he woke up, the thing is gone from him. But not because it's gone from him did not mean that the significance of the dream isn't relevant. It is relevant. But then Daniel prayed. He went. He seek the Lord. And God showed him what the dream was. And not only the dream, but the interpretation thereof. So not because you forget that you dreamt about something. It doesn't mean that, oh, it's not going to happen. You better, you, man, I just, mm, y'all stay there and not be good steward over what God has given you. Okay? So not forget it. Not because you forget the dream. It does not mean that. Um, it's not important. Nebuchadnezzar's dream was very symbolic, even to the time we're living in right now, thousands of years in advance. That's how symbolic his dream was. But he woke up, he said, it slipped me twice. He said, it slipped me. I forgot it. The thing is gone from me. All right. So um, let's keep going. Number three, I'm going to rush through this because I got to go pick my kids up. I left them by their grandparent. <laughs> All right. They're my grandma. Okay, good. Number three, dreams are unique to the world you are in your dreams are going to be unique to your world again god i, I don't know sometimes i think people watch the news too much because i mean i'm not saying god can't talk to you about certain things but I, I i don't know i i don't know i don't know what to say about that but you, you you're not going to dream about mars exactly all right and unless it's it's relevant you you show me who it was in the scripture that God spoke to them outside of what involves them, includes them, outside of their rank, outside of their position, their responsibility. I just want you to show me one person that God just for fun, just for fun, okay, just for fun, just gave random dreams for no reason with absolutely no significance to the reality of what they're called to address, deal with, or they're involved with. Okay, so I want you to come back down to humanity just for a second. I know it's a lot for you to do because you're pumped up, hyped up spiritual, but come back down. All right, and let's talk about Bruno. Okay, all right. God is going to speak to you in the uniqueness of the world that you live in. He's going to use things that's symbolic and things that's important to you. For example, I dream a lot about open fire. <laughs> Why? That's my realm and my responsibility. So God will show me people in the church doing things they ain't got no business doing. Why? Because I am called to that. Pastor Coffee would have vision of the same. Why? Because we're called to that. I am also assigned by my apostles over me and my leadership to be an intercessor in my region. I don't expect God to talk to me about New York City and California. I am called to Texas. I am not a prophet to the nations. Will God use me in that capacity? Maybe so. That's God's business. But for right now, I'm maximizing where God has called me. So God will show me things about Texas, about the city where I live. Why? Because I'm called to that. It's my realm. It's unique to me. All right. So you're going to have familiar symbols. You're going to see people you're familiar with. God will use those things to speak to you about your world. And 95% of your dreams, they said on an average, when they look at this, they said about 95% of our dreams are usually about us anyhow. Either God showing you, you messed up, you nasty, you don't love people right. And in your dream, you're thinking you offended, you're being suspicious, you don't like the person when God was just showing you that your heart got a problem. But you know how we are, you know, and uh, one day I'll, I'll teach about spiritual narcissists. narcissists. So uh, that's another message. But not now. Y'all don't even try that because I feel like I'm already offending people. And I want to, I want to, I want I notice the views. Y'all move from 50 something and just 40 something of us is here now. And I don't know what I just done said. So let me hurry up. Okay. All right. Number four. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm dramatic. All right. So it's going to be unique to you. you. And guess what? It might be unique to an area in the church you serve, an area in the business, uh, with the family you're connected to. And so, um, so 
You might be working in the media and you have a dream about the media ministry. You might be working in children's church. You have a vision about children's church. Why? Because wherever God puts you, you literally by default become an intercessor for that area. And so God will speak to you about what's unique to you in that realm. All right. Number four, when dreams are repeated, it is established by God. Genesis 41, 1 to 2. Pharaoh said the dream happened twice. When it's repeated, it means that God wants to establish it. Stop being, you know, there's some people when they come and they tell me they have dreams. I don't listen to nothing they're saying because they're so indisciplined. So by the time they come to tell me the stuff already happened and, um, and they'll be like, yeah, you know, cause I saw this. I'm like, that's so irrelevant right now because you should have been a disciplined steward over this area. And then there are people that. What they do is before they come to me, they've already written the vision down, email it to me. So I trust them. I don't just trust them as, as, oh, they had a, they have a dream. I trust them because I realize this is a seer. This is somebody because of where they're assigned. God speaks to them like this. And I have people, they're disciplined like that. They email the dreams. And so when the things happen, I would say, you see, you see that God has showed you this in advance. And so because I understand prophetic stuff, I realize God don't need to give me the dream because God, come on now, God don't need necessarily need to give me the dream for me to be able to run and do what I'm doing. Or my husband, God can speak to the people that's there as well. And so when this individual or individuals, because it's more than one of them that's quite disciplined, would say, hey, first lady, I have a dream. This is what I saw. You know, this is what this is. And I would begin. There's times when I know the interpretation because I'm praying about something and God would give somebody in the church a dream. And there's time I know the interpretation and I don't tell them nothing because it doesn't involve them. God only used them to have the dream to confirm to my spirit what he's doing. But I don't say nothing to them because I know it's none of their business. God used them to get the dream. So they would, cause God knew they're going to tell me. And so it's going to be a sign and a confirmation. And sometimes I just don't tell them nothing. And then there's times I would share it with them. So be a good steward and know that if you're seeing something more than once, the thing is repeating itself. All right. You need to be diligent knowing I got to be in prayer about this area. I keep dreaming about my kids with this situation. I keep dreaming about my husband doing this situation. You got to be diligent in that area. You got to pray in that area. All right. Um, number five, and then two more and I'm done. The redemptive power of God. Come on for doom days, dreamers. Here we go. The redemptive power of God is the glory of revelation. Now, what do I mean by that? God reveals to redeem. That's what that means. God's redemptive power is revealed when things are revealed in dreams and vision. God is trying to redeem. In Job, he said, he's keeping you from the pit. So why do you think everything you have that God just want to kill people and judge people? Something is wrong with how your spirit is measured. That's why when you get dreams, you don't know how to intercede. You become suspicious rather than an intercessor. When you get dreams, I'm going to say it again, you become suspicious rather than stepping in the role of an intercessor because you, you can't be trusted. God is God wants to trust you. God wants to build a relationship with you. He's showing you things for you to be a good steward over in your dreams and in your vision. But because you have a doomsday heart, you begin to judge people, judge yourself. You don't think you're worthy because you dreamt you failed the test and you're a failure. And you, you I mean, or, or you see stuff about people and you label people because you know how they would dream stuff and they just label you. You are this and you are that so God reveals to redeem so if God is revealing something to you obviously he wants some redemption in that area God's first move is never to bring judgment if you come and you dream there's mess in the church it's not for you to go on Facebook call all the friends that you're hypocrites with and call all of them and gossip and talk about I just have a dream God go expose them I want God to expose me I've been hearing that God go expose me for a long time for the last 10 years I've been in the city of Cali and I'm like, God, can you please, I'm begging you for the sake of these people who've been praying for exposure. I'm praying to expose me to God, expose me. And I mean, cause you're in the realm where when your heart isn't right towards somebody, you don't even realize that demons can infiltrate that realm to further destroy either the individual, your connection with them and the assignment y'all have together. So Satan come in the mix and he tell you they falls like, and I mean, you suspicious about everybody falls except you. And I can't.
can't even identify the real thing in you anyhow, but everybody falls except you. And so you got to be careful how you measure stuff. What's the judgment line in your spirit? Because the measure you meet, that's where you're going to be met. So you got to make sure in your spirit when you're seeing things that your heart condition is postured properly because um, it is pride to assume everything you dream comes from God. I'm going to say that again. It is pride to assume everything you dream comes from God. Because the devil can speak to you and your flesh can talk to you. And we see that in the Bible. So why you so amazing? You, everything you see, right? I mean, uh, you just go, it, it's just, it's just, it's just from God. No, it's from God for you to intercede. It's from God showing you an attack of the enemy on the person's marriage. Not for you to go and watch to see their marriage is going to be destroyed. Then what's the use of you if, if this is what you do? And some of us, when we're pushed out of position because we don't handle the trust of God well, we get upset with God when God said, I've been speaking to you. I've been trying to connect with you. I've been trying to use you. But you're so judgmental in your spirit that God can't trust you with his people. He can't trust you with information because your first inclination is, I want to tear people down. I want to expose the leadership. Like, like, go expose the devil. That's who the Bible said to expose. God can deal with his leaders. Go expose the devil. Come on. Can, when we going to get busy to go expose the witches that's around. My God almighty. Go expose what the devil is doing in your family. Come on now. And so we got to watch that judgment in our spirit. Because we would tend to believe everything we see. It's God trying to kill somebody, get rid of somebody. You got to watch how you measure stuff in your spirit. All right. This two more and then I'm done and I'm going to see you at Bible study tomorrow. We're going to continue on standing firm in the midst of adversities. All right, we're going to continue on that for tomorrow. So let me give you this two and then we're done. This flows over from five. Consider the place of your heart when you have a dream. Consider the place of your heart. What's the condition of my heart? I gave you guys the example last week when Minister Jessica, um, when in the vision, in the August, God showed me they were coming back to the church. In the vision, I saw them, they were serving. And I got furious. I came out mad. How come Pastor Coffee have Minister Jessica serving and doing all of these things in the church? And Elijah is out there serving in Pastor Coffee's office. I'm a bearing him. I mean, I was livid, right? Because I'm awesome. I'm somebody. Hello? I'm um, First Lady April Coffee. God speak to me. So how come? I don't know what's going on. So in the dream, I came out furious. And right there in the dream, God began to show me it had nothing to do with Minister Jessica and her husband. I'm showing you that I'm already ahead of you. They're going to be restored to their position in the in at their home church. God is going to be using them. The people are going to embrace them. This is what's going to happen. And I'm trying to tell you that your heart and the pride in your spirit, April, is not ready for this move of God. And so that was something I fixed real quick. And God made sure I fixed that real quick. All right. He put some pressure on me in that. And then when my spirit was at the right place at the right time, you know, God did that. And I look at minister Jessica now, and even just working with her, that's a testimony from God. God did this, but God had to show me the pride in my spirit that wouldn't open up to, uh, my heart, you know, to having them there the way that God wanted them to be. This was God's will. So God was revealing the pride and the stupidity within my own spirit. And we see that in the book of Job chapter 33. You got to consider your heart alignment. is my, Where is my heart in the vision? And this can also be in the sensual realm. If you're lost in, don't come up in the dream talking about, oh, I think it's my husband that's been nasty when you're the one having a nasty dream. And your husband didn't even have a nasty dream last night. You did. And then you'll be like, yeah, I think, you know, he carrying up spirits up in here. No, it's in your dream, sweetie. You, you carrying up the spirits up in there. You know, it's you. All right. And so you got to manage the condition of your heart because you can have lust in your spirit, jealousy in your spirit. You can see in a dream that you're jealous over somebody in the church and don't be like, try to interpret it like, oh, I think they're going to be jealous over me. No, be honest with your spirit. I mean, 
You know, be true to thyself, um, Shakespeare. Come on, man. Be true to thyself. All right? Be true to yourself. Realize, okay, God is showing me I have jealousy in me. Or if you see you have anger in you, be true to the emotions you express in the dreams. Don't try to dumb them down. If you saw that you were judgmental in the dream, God is telling you you got that thing in you. You see that you were lustful in the dream. God is telling you, you nasty, you got that thing in you. Go get rid of it. So don't try to play it off on people and create your own interpretation for the conviction that God is bringing to you. So measure your heart while you're having dreams. You got to make sure your heart, check your heart alignment. See the posture of your heart when you're doing this. And lastly, again, I want to leave with us that the New Testament church, it's always led by the Spirit of God, never by dreams and visions. So even though we have taught this and I did two weeks of it, almost three, four hours of it, I don't know how much it will total to, um, and I might be getting some good news so you guys can have this available in another platform, a little bit more detail that you will be able to teach it back and train it back to somebody. So I believe that God has answered a prayer for me. And um, um, so I might have some good news for you guys with just more of the teachings and what I'm going to be doing. All right. But here it is again. Not because we've learned so much about dreams and visions. It doesn't mean this is how we're going to live our lives. I want you to know, ultimately, number one, what I said at the beginning and what I said at the end is so vital. Interpretation, it comes from the Lord. It must be in alignment with his word. And number two, you, number two, the last thing that I want for you to take away, if you don't take away nothing is, in your dream toolbox, please to understand the New Testament church was not led by dreams and visions. They were led by God. Some of you still in the Gideon realm where you throwing out your fleece because you don't know how God lead and God might answer you and work with you because that's where you're at. But the place where God really wants you to be is where you're being led by the spirit. So even if the spirit speak to you in a dream and a vision, you're being led by the spirit and to be led by the spirit simply means to be led by the word of God. It's not just the spirit of God because some of us want the Holy Spirit to lead us, but you don't want the word to guide you. All right. And the Holy Spirit does not lead outside of his word. So again, if I have to answer you on dream interpretation, I want for you to know interpretation comes from the Lord. Go to the Holy Spirit first. Some of the things you might have to take a day, just to skip a meal, be in prayer and fasting about, go to the Holy Spirit first. He's going to reveal to you. He's going to speak to you. He's going to show you what's going on. I really, really pray that today you have been blessed with this teaching and that you've been encouraged, that you got some clarity you you know you kind of know what directions to go and you're able to be managing and watching your own heart making sure you're in alignment with God's word as it relates to the dream realm and that you are open to know that it is a safe realm that even if the devil tried to take you up God is still with you that's why you got to load up your spirit with the word so that when demons come at night to either attack you or to sow seeds in you they can find nothing in you Jesus said the prince of this world will come but he will find nothing in me you know why Jesus Jesus could confidently say that because in the dream realm, when the prince came, he found nothing in Jesus. So Jesus knew naturally speaking. Now, when he come, he ain't going to find nothing in me because he came in the dream realm and it wasn't in me. So he ain't going to find it in me. And so just to make sure you're watching over your heart and uh, you, you've, you've gotten some tools and uh, just be in prayer. I bless you. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining us for Power Monday Evening Empowerment. I am going to see you tomorrow as I continue our teaching on standing firm. It's a word by word teaching coming from the book of James. All right. It's a word by word teaching where James is talking, count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials. So I want to be breaking that down, showing you how this look practically in your life, giving you some tools for you to be able to apply. All right. I love you guys. Keep praying for us. I know people take for granted that because we're called of God, that we don't need prayer. It's the more you need to pray for us. I need it. All right. So pray for us. Don't just love us and appreciate us. My God, pray for us, please. I'm begging you. Okay. And um, pray for the work that God has called us to. Again, thank you all so much for joining. Hey, Prudence, I see you. I love you. Prudence, tell Jennifer hello. I think I saw her on earlier on. 
tell them hello for me and god bless you hey sonia oh my god sonia god bless you i just saw that all right are you here all right sonia okay okay all right i love you guys god bless you thank you for watching us i will pick this up with you guys on tomorrow uh, not this teaching, but the word of God. All right. I love you guys. God bless you. God cover you. And may the Lord speaks to you in dreams and in visions to give you instructions and to reveal to you the secrets, not only of your heart, but of his heart. God bless you. I love you. See you at Bible study. Thank you for sowing your seeds. Thank you for being a blessing to the ministry. We appreciate you. God bless you. On behalf of Senior Pastor Coffee, our lead pastor at Open Fire International Fellowship, we bless God for you. See you guys soon. Mwah. Love you guys. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll see you. Bible study.